Hello and welcome everybody to my painting guide. In this video I will be showing you how I painted the Leviathan for my Thousand Sons army. I'll also be showing you how I created some battle damage and weathering effects upon the Leviathan. If you like our videos please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe and you can also now start following us on Instagram and Facebook. I undercoated the model Chaos Black Primer from Games Workshop. Once the model had dried, I'd use some simple masking tape from you can buy from a local hardware store and created two lines down the, the Leviathan's body. In this next stage, I wanted to create some pre-shading on the model. So using a Ceramite White, I then created a, a milky consistency in the airbrush and then just gently applied around the model using my airbrush to where I wanted the light to hit the model. For the shoulder parts, I used a small drop of Ceramite White and a small drop of Sky Blue from Scale Colour and then just watered it down into the airbrush and then went completely over the model. So it's kind of like a pale blue around the shoulder pads. For the next stage I wanted to highlight all the, white, all the white areas again, but this time I just used the Ceramite White on its own. In this next stage, I went over the model with a Vallejo Red. Where the red's hitting the, the pre-shaded model, you can see the highlighted parts coming out and then the pre-shading underneath. In this next stage, I wanted to create a more vibrant red on the model. 
So the next stage, I used the scale color interest red, and I just wanted to go over the the lighter areas with the interest, which made the, the red pop a lot more, and it made it stand out. For the next part, I went over the model with the uh, Vallejo metal color uh, steel, and I went over all the metal parts with a brush. For the next stage, I just wanted to make the white pop a little bit more. So pop in a small drop of Ceramite white onto the plate. I then watered it down and then started to add the Ceramite white to the edges of the, of the white. Adding the white by a brush onto the model makes the white pop out a lot better than if it was done through the airbrush. With the edges, I wanted to make them pop a little bit more and make them be a little, little bit more sharper with the white. So then going back in with the Ceramite white, going through with a, not watered down, but just a little bit thicker on the actual brush itself just to make the edges stand out more.
For the headpiece, all I went back in with just ceramite white in between the gaps. For the next stage, I use a Vallejo Gold, the, uh, the acrylic metal color range. Really lovely color, and it goes on really, really nice with the model via airbrush or via, or via paintbrush. For the eye gem, I then went over with a Cantor Blue as my base. For the next stage, I went in with a scale colour, just a slightly lighter blue, just to start working around the edges of the gem. For the next stage, I went in with the Caribbean Blue. Again, just water down and then just come further into the edges just to raise the, the reflection. I had to do many layers of the Caribbean Blue to get it how I want it to be. The next part, I added a, a drop of Ceramite White to the mix. Once all the paint had dried, I then went over with the uh, Citadel Glaze Blue. For the next stage, I wanted to create some weathering effects and some damage to the paint. Using a sponge and my fist in red, I just gently tapped over over the black lines to make it look like the, the black paint had started chipping away and the red was coming through underneath. On the head, I just done the same process as I did upon the shoulders. Mm -hmm. 
With a watered down Chaos Black, I then created a black line down the center of the helmet. To make it look like the paint has started chipping off onto the black, with a Ceramite White, I just then popped it on with the sponge, just to make it look a little bit weathered. Now for the eyes, I wanted to make it nice and simple. So then using a real bright silver metallic paint, I just then went into, into the eyes and the recesses of the eyes. The next stage, I just used some gun metal gray from Vallejo just going around all the, the pipes that are going around the helmet. For the next stage, I use a Tamiya Clear Green over the eyes. Once the Tamiya dries, it makes it look like a glass effect. Around all the exhaust pipes, I then use the, uh, again, the Vallejo copper. For the next part, I wanted to create the effect that the paint had started chipping off on the model itself. Um, so if it was in battle and it had been moving through rubble and things like that, over time or through the battle itself, paint would have started chipping off. So using a bright orange, and then for this one, I used the Fire Dragon Orange. Um, I just used a sponge and just tapped around the edges where I would, I would have imagined the paint would have got chipped off in the battle. For the next stage, I wanted to be more precise on where the paint has started to chip off. So using a paintbrush, I then went back over with the, with the orange.
For the next stage, I use a mixture of 50-50 of Rust from Vallejo and Chaos Black from Citadel. I applied the paint into the center of the orange to create a darker patch and where, it, where the paint would have chipped off and you would have seen kind of like the rust effect underneath. Some people would have used probably um, a silver, um, but I much prefer this effect in using the in using the the browns and the blacks. For the next stage, around the white parts of the armature, I used the, an orange rust. Same as the previous, I just used a drop of light rust and chaos black and then just started adding into the orange rust on the white parts. For the next stage, I used a satin varnish and gave, a, gave the model two coats. For the next part, I wanted to add some decals to the model.
the next stage I added some microsole onto the actual areas where I wanted the, um, the decal to sit and I find this helps the decal sit nicely on the model. For the next stage, I created a white spirit uh, wash using just a small drop of um, Winsor Newton oil in with some varnish. And all I done was just popped it into the recesses. And then once you pop it on, you find the, the oils just nicely and smoothly just fall down into the recesses. If you ever find that you've done too much, you can always go back over with a little cotton bud with a bit of uh, white spirit on top of it. And because you've use the, the satin varnish over the top of it you can safely wipe away the excess amount of um, oil afterwards also an awesome part of this is if you make a mistake or you do too much or you change your mind going back over that cotton bud you can just reset just wipe it off reset and redo it again For the next stage, I wanted to add some um, where the rust has started running down the side of the model and some like the, the rain streaks on the actual model itself. So for the next stage, all I've done was just put a small dot of, um, of the oil, oil paint on top of the model and then with a soft brush, I then dipped into the white spirit and then just gently pulled down on the model. Once all the oil had dried off the model, as you can see from the pictures, the effects that you get from the oil paints in creating the uh, rain effects where the um, rust is running down the side of the model is absolutely awesome. I really hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. If you like, if you like what you've seen today, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching.